Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Kira and I am the Crypto Froggy. Uh, today I'd like to talk about J Miner and how it needs to be modified in order to be compatible with the new uh, POCC pools. The new Proof of Capacity Consortium's pool uses estimated capacity to allocate shares to the miners that contribute to the pool. And this capacity algorithm requires some changes on JMiner in order for JMiner to work properly with the pool. With the other mining software like Blago and CreepMiner, they support the concept of a local target deadline. And for JMiner, JMiner does not have the ability to support this local target deadline or the ability for the miner to override the recommended target deadline that the pool is saying it should have. And this is the major distinction switching from older pool software to the newer pool software. As you can see here, this is my 50-50 uh, pool information. I've got my miners on here. And if you go to uh, Quick Info, uh, you'll see that it gives you the calculator ability here. So if you were working with 392 terabytes like I am, and click calculate. This is the target deadline that you would want to put into your mining software. And you wouldn't want your mining software to send deadlines that are higher than this number. And this is to help the algorithm guess your plot sizes. 392 terabytes is my capacity right now. But if you look at effective capacity on my subscription for my address, you'll see that it's, it's just shy of 300. I've got some more work to do optimizing my rig. Most of my deadlines are going in very fast. The problem is I have to bring down one of my rigs when I record videos because it's extremely noisy. So, and I won't be able to fix that anytime soon. Anyways, with that said, I'd like to show you guys how I went about changing J minor and hopefully helping people that are curious about programming or learning programming maybe give them some ideas on how to go about changing an existing piece of software. So the first thing you have to do is go to the repository for the code that you want to change. So in this case, I want to go to Lux's repository for BurstCoin JMiner. BurstCoin JMiner is written in Java. And so for anyone that's programmed before, it's actually pretty familiar. Uh, it's an object oriented language. And even though I'm not a Java programmer, I was able to pick up the bare minimum that I needed to make the changes. I took the JMiner download and I put it in my Eclipse workspace folder. So here's my workspace and here's BurstCoin JMiner. And I extract it in there. You can see I already have a target directory here. You won't have this directory. This is where when you compile your JMiner, this is where it will go. Once you've downloaded Eclipse, you're going to extract it into a folder. I extracted it into C slash Eclipse. And then to run it, you're just going to double click the EXE. And it's going to say that it could not be verified, whatever. We're just going to run it. Mysterious internet software. So I've opened up Eclipse and I've also opened up JMiner so we can take a quick look at it. Show you guys exactly where I looked when I started to play with this code. Uh, one of the things that I was looking for was trying to find where target deadline was used or displayed. And the thing that caught my eye was that uh, when the block was started, it would list the target deadline. So here we have got our target deadline, and this is the one specified by the pool. And we'll also look over here because we have some more information about what this is. So it looks like it's coming from the round or maybe the pool or the round pool. So these are just hints of where we can start looking in the code. First things first though, once we have Eclipse open, let's go ahead and make sure that we can import and compile JMiner. When I imported JMiner into my workspace, I had a little bit of trouble. Uh, to save you guys some time, I'm gonna walk through it real quick. Uh, once you've done that, it will give you over here, you'll see BurstCoin JMiner and you'll see all these things. So before we start changing the code, let's go ahead and compile it and make sure everything works properly. So I'm going to right click on my project and I'm going to run as Maven install. And you want to do this when you're not currently running JMine or anything like that, just FYI. So we'll go Maven install. The reason why you don't want to do this when JMine is running is 
If you're running the jar file from Burst Coin J Minor Target, uh, it won't be able to replace the file. So this would have put a new jar in the directory. And I have already copy pasted run.bat and my jminer properties in here for testing. You can get run.bat from the folder up and you can take the jminer.default.properties and use that as a basis for your properties file. And then to test it, you just go run.bat and we can see it's working just fine. And this is same target deadline, everything's cool. So we'll just close that. Okay, so let's get hacking. We're not gonna hack this up too bad. One thing that I really wanna show you guys is kind of how to go about this. Ultimately, what we need to do is find out how the target deadline gets computed and then add a setting into the program for telling it to use the local target deadline versus the remote target deadline. And there's a couple ways to do this, but this is the way I came up with. If you remember the keywords that we pulled out from when we were running JMiner, which was target deadline, round, and pool. And those aren't necessarily exactly what we need to find, but we're gonna start with target deadline. That is the most likely thing. So first things first, I'm gonna to go to search on Eclipse and we'll go to file. And you guys can't see this window because XSplit is stupid, but uh, I'm gonna do a file search and we're gonna do containing text target deadline with a capital D. And we're gonna scope it to the workspace. We'll click search. And now we can see where everything is. And we really wanna just be using the source directory here. Network round, okay, so we already knew that there's something to do with round here. So this is good to know. So what we can do, we can go on here, round Java. Oh, see, target deadline. And let's see here, so this is target deadline. Where does this get used? Event, get deadline, okay. Fire event, round started event. So this must be what spits out the text when a new round starts. So I was just feeding it in that it's not going to be the decisive place where we're going to set the deadline. And if we look a little more, we see calculated deadline lower than target deadline. Okay. So that's doing some more stuff, but that's still not really what we're looking for. So it looks like we need to find out where the round gets initialized because this is mostly utilizing it. It's not telling it what it is. So let's go up here and we'll go to the, the, the class declaration and let's find references. Oh, that didn't help us at all. Hmm. If we search references on the round, we're not really getting much. We get this here and I think this might be the one to look at. These are all classes and I have a feeling if we go down here, you can see we get the target deadline from event. So let's see if we can uh, go into this reference here. Aha, no, that doesn't help us. It's right here. <laughs> okay, so what's this event? Let's find this event. Network state change event, okay. And here's our target deadline again. So this looks good. Okay, so it gets initialized with target deadline. So I wonder where this actually gets used. So this looks good, it's passing information around. Okay, so I look for references for this. And you'll, you'll notice that with IDE environments, your references and your declaration searcher are really helpful. So we've got this network request mining info task and this is utilized by run. So actually this gives us exactly what we're looking for. You see right here? So this is trying to determine the target deadline. And if you're pool mining, it gets the target deadline from a result. And if that target deadline from the HTTP client, which in this case would be the pool, and it's higher than zero, it's going to use the target deadline that the pool specifies. Otherwise, it's going to use your default target deadline. And your default target deadline is here. It checks to see if you have a default target deadline. And if so, it'll use it. Otherwise, it'll use the maximum value specified. 
network request my info task gets initialized, it gets initialized with a default target deadline. So this is probably the one getting fed in from a setting. So if we find out what's initializing the network request my new info task, we get this network check network, network state. And there you go. This dot default target deadline equals core properties get target deadline. This shows us where it comes from the properties file. So this target deadline, a long target deadline, default target deadline. So this is trying to pull the property from the properties file. The first thing we have to do is we have to add another variable in here that allows us to tell it to use the local deadline even if the pool sends us something. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy the formatting we've got here. Let's add force local target deadline. And this will be the name of our new Boolean. And if that's true, then we're gonna use the default target deadline. So here's the variable for circle target deadline. If that's true, default target deadline. Otherwise it'll do it just like it normally was. And now we need to get this for circle target deadline in here. And this is, the pool mining is all, already a Boolean. So it's already just gonna be true or false. So let's, let's mo model our new property off of pool mining. Wherever we see pool mining, you might need to add this new one. And now we need to go to where this init gets used. So here's where we're calling this init process. Here's our default target deadline. So we need to make it past our new property. So we're, we're just copying what's in pool mining, right? So what we need to do is again, we're, gonna, we're just copying what we've got uh, for is pool mining, because that's also a Boolean. Okay, and now we need to add this method to core properties. So this is going to determine what happens when the property is not set in the properties file. And now this becomes default force local target deadline. And we're going to make this go to false so that we don't surprise anyone. Declaration for our new variable or property. And I'm not sure why it's highlighting it, but I see all these errors all over the place. What's going on, Lux? Do I have my settings wrong or something? So this should do the trick. Uh, the only thing that we're gonna need to do is modify our default properties so that people know what's going on. So here's the default properties file. So I've plugged in some text in there, so we should be good to go. That's all the changes we need. Okay, compiling for the last time, hopefully. Maven install. Cool, build success. Awesome. Let's go take a look. And I've got my properties in here from before. And I've already put force local target deadline equals false in here. So we've declared the value and we should just be able to go run.bat and make sure that we don't have any problems and make sure we're using the pools deadline. 3156, whatever, whatever. Yep, that's the pools deadline. So we're still good there. And uh, let's close this. And hopefully the pool doesn't get mad at me. Let's open up our Jminer properties. And we're gonna change force local target deadline to true. And we're gonna make sure that our local deadline is specified. This is supposed to be the one that comes from the pool. So if we look on the pool, and again, we're just going to click info. So it needs to be 527327, copy that. And now we'll just hit our run.bat. And there we go, target deadline, 527327. So that was fun. Um, this is the second time I recorded this video because my first video I was freaking out. I was like, how do I install Eclipse? How do I get the right JDK? How do I even compile? I hit so many problems. So there you have it. We modified Jminer to work with the new Proof of Capacity Consortium's new pool software. And we did it without hacking it up too bad, although Lex might have another opinion. 
Anyways, uh, the code that I changed today will be available on my GitHub. And I'll also compile a jar file and give you guys the modified properties file in a link in the description. If you have any feedback or comments, criticism, you want to make fun of me, uh, you can direct that to my comments or you can join us on Discord. I'm extremely active on the Burst and the POCC Discord, so join me there. I'll put links to those in the description as well. I hope you guys found this video helpful and educational and Maybe you learned something about Java because you, like me, you don't know what Java is or you don't program Java or anything like that. I was just using what I know about other languages that are similar to Java to try and get through this. But I do think there is a future for me with Java. Uh, Java is really important to the Burst community and the platform and the wallet and all those things. So maybe I should really learn it, like actually learn it. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. I've always got brand new Burst content and I'm always working on cool new projects, so I hope you'll join me in the future. If you'd like to be a rock star and be a super supporter, go ahead and check out my Patreon link. Patreon allows me to do these videos without having to worry about money too much. And it's just getting started, but I hope you will check me out there. In any case, thanks for watching and I hope to catch you guys next time.